Okay, okay. All right. So um, good afternoon once again, and welcome to today's um, lunch and learn session. Like I said earlier, this is an avenue where we share knowledge, just broaden each other's horizon and learn new stuff. So today is going to be all about SEO and the different techniques that you can actually apply to increase organic traffic on your website. So my name is Omo Umi Victoria Samson, and I'm the web project manager at Future Software Resources Limited. Okay, so um, the major focus for this, um, the major focus of this session is going to be on SEO, like I said. So I'm going to be talking about indexing. I'm going to be talking about crawlers. I'm going to be shedding more light on ranking as well. And also I'll be talking about the different um, techniques of SEO that you can actually apply to rank organically. And that's basically the major focus of today. Then I'll also be talking about how you can do it right. But then lastly on the list is going to be me recommending SEO tools that you can make use of to achieve all of this. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to start from the very basics, which is going to be me shedding more light on SEO, Google crawlers, indexing, and ranking. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay, so first off, what is SEO? So SEO stands for search engine optimization. And in simple terms, it means the process of improving your site to increase its visibility on Google search results, basically. So um, one thing I'd like to like, um, explain right here is that when it comes to search engines, one thing you need to understand is the search intent first off. Because when we're talking about SEO, it's not basically just jumping into the on-page, off-page, and, and the technical SEO, which I'm going to be shedding more light on as we proceed. But then another part of SEO that you need to really, really understand is the search intent aspect, as well as the um, search engine itself. So by search engine, I mean Google. I also mean, it might be Bing as well. Even YouTube is also a search engine and it's even um, ranked as the second largest search engine. So um, I am going to be talking about that as well as we proceed. So one thing with um, search engines and ranking on the first page of search engine results page is that you need to really, really understand um, the crawling aspect of it. You also need to understand the indexing aspect, which I'll break down as we proceed, right? But then before I move on to the crawlers, the index and the ranking, I'd like to um, talk about the difference between the search engine um, results that we get organically and also the ones that we get via running ads. So the difference between SEO and, and the ads is actually because SEO is basically gotten by you applying the different practices, the best practices of SEO in order to rank on the first page of search engine results, which is the SERP, sorry. So, um, but then you can also rank without all that by running Google ads. So that's why when you go on a Google, um, when you search for something on Google, maybe you type in any query into Google and then you get a list of um, results on the first page. There are some that have the label ad in front of it. These are actually the ones that were promoted. So, a Google ad was, um, was run and then it, um, you get to see it on the first page. So it was promoted and then you get to see it there. But there are some that you can actually do without doing all of that um, ad promotion and stuff. So that's the major focus of today, which is how you can actually do it without running ads. And then you can still get discovered and be visible on the first um, page of the search engine results. So um, let's proceed. So what is a prola and... How does it work? So basically crawling is the discovery process in which it's always represented with like um, a spider kind of thing. So you can also see it from this image here. So um, it is basically the process where they send this team of robots out to find new and updated content. And basically the focus is always on the URL. So what they look out for is always the URL and nothing more. So it is from this URL, after they've successfully crawled your site and they discover your URL, then you move on to the indexing aspect of it, which is what I'm talking about now. So um, for the indexing part, it is actually um, achieved once you've ensured your site has been crawled. So the next order of business is to make sure that it can be indexed. So um, um, just so you can, the fact that you've been crawled doesn't mean your site has been indexed. And the index is actually more like a database of discovered pages. So it is when your site is indexed that um, they start to take out and um, take a look at the content. Is it relevant enough to be on the first page of this Google search results or to be ranked, like even to be ranked at, at all? So the fact that your web pages or your web page has been indexed 
doesn't automatically mean you're going to see yourself on the front page of the search engine results because that's where they get to analyze and assess your um, pages and the content on there to be very sure that, okay, this content is valuable enough or it's not um, worthy of being on the first page. So that's where you get to be either ranked on the first page or maybe your um, page might not be ranked at all or maybe fall on the second page. It all depends on how well you work on this and how they rank it. So yeah, ranking can be the first, second, third, or even um, subsequent numbers like um, 70, 60, and the likes. But the most important thing is to be on the first page of the Google search engine results, right? Um, so let's move on to the next thing. What is ranking? When someone performs a search, when someone performs a search, so search engines call their, um, their index for highly relevant content, like I said earlier. So, and then, the, and then others that content in the hope of solving the searcher's query. So one thing you need to understand is when it comes to search engines and how they really, really work, it's more about the search and um, the searcher's intent, first off, before any other thing, because it is what the, um, the, the searcher is actually typing into the search engine that the search engine is going to like obey and then try to give them answers to that question. So you need to understand that it's, it's more of a human um, element than the whole crawlers, index, and stuff. So you need to be sure that you are properly capturing the searcher's intent. You're properly capturing the keywords that your target audience will likely type into the Google search engine. And then, yeah, when all that is done perfectly and you get like, okay, you do your research properly, like keyword research and stuff using the right tools that you should. So I'm going to be talking about that as, as we proceed as well. So if you do all of that, you are going to properly um, see that your site gets ranked because it's more about how relevant your page is, how relevant your content is. So that's where it, it's, it's um, and when it comes to ranking, it's more of the most relevant to the least relevant. So the ones that appear on the first results and on the first page of the search engine results is always um, a list of most relevant content and um, websites that have most re relevant content. So it's also about competition. So you have to bear in mind that you are competing with other people in your space, other people in your industry. So you need to understand how they are doing it perfectly. And one way to, um, the best approach sometimes is always, um, apart from doing your own research first, that's the keyword research first, Another best approach is actually to see um, the people in your industry and how they are already doing it. I mean, those that are already appearing on the first page. And I remember there was a time when I was doing like um, one or two research in this, um, in this light. One thing that I actually wanted to like really, really understand is why are these pages being ranked first? I mean, what are they doing right? What's here? What's hidden? What's that thing that they are doing right? That maybe others are not doing right. That is not making them appear on this first page. Because it is when you're visible on the first page that helps you increase your click-through rate. And by click-through rate, I mean the number of people who click on the link on your, um, to your, your website, the link to your website. So when you appear on the first page of the search engine results, the next thing is for people to like be, for, for their interest to be sparked enough so they can click on it and then they can um, find us and themselves on the main page. So I wanted to understand what are these and what are these people doing right? Why is it that it is so very it is very difficult for others to like find find themselves on the first page? So I needed to study everything on that platform. The first thing I did, I had to um, take a look at the the meta tag. I had to also take a look at the, at the meta description as well as the URL. So if you check, um, if you type anything on Google and then it gives you different results, you're going to see that. Things you find out there, apart from um, what others also search for, are actually maybe a list of answers from other websites that answer the, and that, get, and that provide the perfect answer to the question that you typed into the search engine. So the, um, what you're going to find is the URL, that's the click, uh, link that you can click on to find yourself on the main page itself. Then there's also the description and then the meta title. So if these titles are doing it to write, then how is it that they are doing it that they are here? So I had to like observe that one thing they all have in common that there's always the keyword in the title tag, there is always the keyword in the URL, and there's always the keyword in the description. So for the description, it is always like um more, they, they, they actually add more keywords there because you can add more extension there. And then for the title tag, maybe one or two of your keywords, and then in the um, URL right there, you can also add one or two keywords, um, one keyword most likely. 
But the most important thing is that they all have one thing in common, and that's the URL. And it should be consistent across all of it. Um, yeah, all the three. That's the meta title, tag, the meta title, as well as the description part of um of of the result, of course. So yeah, let me move on to the next one. So just to wrap this part up, it is very important to make sure that you understand that when it comes to ranking, being indexed is not enough to like find yourself on the first page. And it is basically, for Google, it is basically all about which content is most relevant. And that's what they do. Because at the end of the day, Google also wants people to be coming back on their platform and also using it because they have competitions as well. So yeah, it is important to like make sure that you are able to help Google to answer people's um, search query. So let's get to understand search engine and how it works. So Google's, um, Google is getting smarter and more powerful all the time. So not only at analyzing and understanding web pages, but also at how effective it is at keeping people within the framework. I just um, talked about this now. You need to understand that it is more about human elements to give value. Because when people come on the search engine, they want answers. And Google wants to make sure that it is giving them the most relevant, the most valuable content that they can actually get. Contents that provide answers to their questions, basically. So um, you need to understand that even though Google is doing all of this, Google is also trying to make money. So Google sometimes, most times prioritizes the ads. That's why it is getting more tougher to like rank organically. So, but then you can still rank organically without running ads, but that's if you get everything, like all SEO best practices right. So, yeah. So unfortunately, like I said, this makes things, um, the fact that Google is also trying to like um, make money and answer queries of searchers, it makes, it, it makes things very difficult and um, a little bit more hard for, for those who rely on Google's organic, uh, organic search to just um, find themselves on the first engine results page. So that is why I decided to like focus on the things that you can do right to make sure that you are fine, like you, you are visible on the first page of the Google result. So um, here are the 10 SEO methods that will help you, that will help your site to like dominate the SERP page. So, but before I dive in, I'll quickly like to talk about the two um, types of SEO that we have, and that's the black hat and the white hat. So by black hat, I mean, um, when you're, it's just like cybersecurity where they have the black hat hackers and also the white hat hackers. So in this situation for the SEO, it's basically when you're trying to like, apply some tactics that are really not under the rules and regulations of SEO because they have what they approve of and they have what they disapprove of. So if you are going in the direction of things that SM, that Google disapproves of when trying to rank, that means you are practicing the black hat SEO. It doesn't mean it doesn't work, but the thing here is that if, if courts, which is most likely the case, like um, any page that is practicing or any website that is practicing the web, um, the black hat SEO is likely going to get caught and if caught it's um it means that site is going to be blacklisted and penalized and that means they might never rank again so it's important to practice the white hat seo and that's where you make use of all of the um seo tips that i'm going to be dishing out today so let me talk more on the black hat again so for the black hat things that people do to like um rank without following the rules is basically maybe trying to stuff keywords and by stuffing keywords i mean trying to like um maybe put a lot of keywords on on one page and sometimes they even make use of this invisible text cm tri trick and what they do in this situation is they try to like use keywords and then make it very very um make the color the same as the background and when it's the same as background it's invisible but they are trying to trick google into like um helping them rank so they use all the keywords that that perform very well like the, the best performing keywords in this situation and then they try to like make it um fade and then yeah once the color is the same as the background of course it's going to be invisible so another thing is duplicated contents when you duplicate contents just so that you rank higher again because of this particular keyword google is also going to like um find that out and when that's when that happens it's going to be like it's going to cause the website because it will penalize it and blacklist it so instead of duplicating a web page why not ref like um refresh the web page again like um 
re-edit it and add new contents and just yeah because you still want to rank with this particular keyword because you noticed it really helped you the last time so instead of just duplicating that content you can just work on the uh, web page again so most likely maybe a, a blog post or something like that so let's get straight into um, the main discussion of today which is um, the 10 SEO methods that will help you that will help your website um, to rank and dominate the search engine results page so first of content optimization so it basically refers to things like including primary and secondary keywords at the correct density and by this i mean um not over like um, bombarding your website with keywords because at the end of the day you don't really want to choose your website with too much keywords then also when it comes to content creation it is also very important that you know the uh, the right um or the appropriate word count because in that um and yeah for for the appropriate word count it's basically for let's say for a web page like a normal web page your landing page it's from 300 to 600 that's the appropriate one but then for a blog post maybe like 1000 to 2000 but it doesn't really like you can't really judge all of this based on your word count or how do i even put it basically at the end of the day it is more about how well you answer the questions of your um so is the title and the content properly matched to like answer questions of the people who are searching who are typing queries into google search engine and the likes so at the end of the day it is how well you answer your questions and how well your content is laid out i mean is it is it readable like and by readability and you can see it here like ensuring great readability and by readability i mean um how well do you make use of white spaces how well do you make use of bullet points because you don't want it to look too um wordy and the best way to like try to break things down is using screenshots or images on your website so that's a, an image that properly describes a particular um content or a particular section on your website do you make use of white spaces enough do you have um do you make use of white spaces enough do you have bullet points where necessary and yeah the likes so it's very important and also you need to have an optimized meta title and also a descriptive and uh, descriptive tag so i briefly talked about this a while ago so by this i mean your meta title is actually a short description for the search engine basically so the only place where your search title appears is always on google search engine results page it's not something people can see on your page itself or the main page itself so the meta title meta description tag is always on the search engine results page and that's because it is meant for google and for you to know what content and um, what your web page is all about like um yeah you're trying to let it know that this is what this page is about so if you're not properly capturing your keywords right there it's going to like make it very difficult for google to be able to know what your page is all about and if it's difficult for google to know what your page is all about it will be very difficult for it to like um try to index it or even put it out there for people to find that's ranking it and then putting it on the first page of google search results so it's very important for you to like um make sure that that your meta type so and a lot of brands get this right and wrong also they don't always include meta titles and meta tags in uh, on their websites so like i said it's not something you see on your web page it is basically just for the google search engine so adding this is actually a very good practice for seo and i mentioned earlier that it's important that you have your keyword that is consistent both on the descript um, descriptive tag on the meta title and also on the url of that page like right. okay so um so optimizing your content maximizes the chances of it ranking on google and using a tool like click them um, click flow makes the work easy and quick it can feel like using a secret weapon for seo so i said earlier that i'll also be talking about how you can actually achieve all of this by giving suggestions as we proceed. So ClickFlow is actually a very robust tool that you can use when, con when, when you're working on your content optimization, because it has this um, content editor that helps you to like, it basically helps you with suggestions of keywords, helps you know which content on your page. Like it's very broad and robust and it's a 
um, tool you should check out. So even when it comes to trying to rank on the search engine page or identifying content decay, it's it's tool that you can actually use that because um it has this um section on the page like a feature that helps you to like discover pages on your website that are already like um old and outdated and it can help you make suggestions on how to either um revamp it to make it new and to also um to also pass um the SEO the on page SEO aspect of um yeah the on, on page at SEO basically so um when it comes to the related question aspect I am very sure that when you go on Google and you type something there are times that you come across related questions or or what people also search for and the likes so click also helps you with um discovering what people are searching for so it actually reduces your the manual process that you have to like use again to go search again for oh what are people searching for what kind of queries are people typing into google search engine and things like that so click flow really really works so well for content optimization and it's a tool that you should check out and yep so let's move on to the next slide and so improving user experience across your site so what's google go in this situation so just like any search engine their objective is to find the best possible result for each user query so you know i i mentioned earlier that yes google is the best or the most used search engine it doesn't mean they don't have competitions that are also trying to out um to beat them at this game as well so they need to keep their a game on at all times and what they, and by doing this they need to make sure that every result that they present on the first page or second page any result they present is actually something that properly provides value and answer users um search query so if your web page is not doesn't have the perfect layout that um passes google's like it's very hard to tell what google really uses when it comes to um user experience but then there are ways that you can actually there are some basic um tips that you need to like work with and that's the white space that i mentioned earlier is your content readable enough is it easy to navigate that's um yeah is it easy, easy to navigate as well as um how well do you make use of bullet points and the likes so you need to be very sure that okay your website is user friendly because you also want to reduce the bounce rate and by bounce rate i mean when someone comes on your website maybe yeah you've done like somehow they found your website and then they're on your website now so they click on uh, sorry they're already on your website of course so um at the end of the day they did not take any action apart from just landing on your website and the next thing they left so it doesn't matter how long they stayed on your website so long as they did not take any action they did not click any button it doesn't mean it doesn't have to be them buying something or making any purchase it doesn't have to be that so it's basically did they click on any other um call to action to take them to any page if no then that means your that, that that's a bounce rate because they they literally just came on your web page and then left whether they spent five seconds or even a minute it's still a bounce rate because they never took an action so one thing that has been discovered to put people off is the fact um is the the ui of your website or the experience in general so if the experience is not user friendly enough it's going to really reduce um it's going to increase bounce rate and google sees that as not being very good because it passes the message to Google that maybe they are not finding valuable content on your website. So it's going to drop the ranking if that page is already ranking so well it's going to drop the ranking again so it's very important to like make sure that your um your website is user friendly and the experience is amazing across board so i briefly talked about it it's basic and and then leaves without any interaction like i said and all that matters is that it, and then they left so you want to reduce bounce rate on your website so you need to make it user friendly you need to make sure that the content is actually answering your questions as well so that maybe you can spark their interest to take other actions maybe get to know more about your your 
business, what you do, and the likes, maybe contact you if possible. So yeah, so how can you improve the user experience that visitors are having on your website? So you need to make your post easy to read. So this still boils down to the fact that your page has to be um, very like um, user friendly. You need to have descriptive images that properly illustrates like a message that you try passing across. Um, basically just like cut the flow in between because you don't want everything to just be too wordy all along like from start to finish and everything is just all words and no break in between because at the end of the day sometimes like the way the human psychology works is when you see when there's no um, break in between sometimes you might think that um the content is too much or too like it's too much to digest and stuff and might be discouraging so, but when we see images, sometimes it cuts, like it kind of adds a break in between and you can just oh, feed your eyes with that image. And in doing that, so if you're breathing and before you get to the next page, you, yeah. So basically it's very important to just add um, images and also bullet points when necessary, of course. Like when you're trying to highlight some points, that's where you can add bullet points. Also, when you're trying to, um, yeah, white spaces, uh, white spaces are also necessary in between all of this. So try as much as possible to make sure that it is readable. And then the font is not too small because we have different eyesight and likes. So you don't want to strain people's eyes because they're trying to like read your website content. So if it's too small, it might strain some people's eyesight and they might just leave. So the font has to be like readable and then yes, so use bucket brig um, brigades to keep the flow as well. So by bucket brigade, this this um, concept is actually gotten from a um, long time ago where we have um, like, it's more like a chain of people who pass buckets to each other to put out a fire, like when there is a fire or something. So it's more like passing the buckets and then so people can put out the fire or something like that. So, but in the copyright context, it's more of connecting this, um, connecting each content to the next, or better still, connecting each um, message to the next. So if you're able to properly connect them to the next, what you're doing is you're keeping the flow and you are also keeping your readers glued because they want to know what next, they want to know what next. So if you're able to like, just make do with this principle as well, it is really going to help your, web, um, yeah, it's going to help the user experience on that website. Also the inverted pyramid style. In this situation, what you do is you're focusing more on the most important, um, message the most valuable message that you're trying to pass or the most valuable tip that you're trying to give out you're putting that at the very start of your content and not at the end so it's more of the most important content at the top and then the least relevant content comes at the end so basically what this is talking about is you need to focus on giving out the um, the value that you want to give out from the very start of the content creation before they even get to the end and this is because not everybody has the patience to read everything and we know how the reading culture is not really good um for some people so it's important that you're able to like pass the message as fast as possible so that you don't get bored and leave uh, before even getting an answer to their question and of course you'll find themselves on another on your competition some um, page so it's important for you to like get them glued and send the message first before they even get discouraged. So the next one is cover related questions to align with search intent. So um, for this part, you can actually, I don't know if you've seen on, so you should have seen it on, on Google search engine results page when you type something and then you sometimes see like, um, more like FAQ at the bottom of the description. So it's, it's always falls on the, the title tag, the descriptive um, tag, and then the, and then you find your um, FAQ schema. Basically, that's what it's called. So for this one, it's more of a strategy to capture other questions that searchers might be typing into the Google search engine results page. So it's more like you trying to, um, you trying to like just do like get it right here get it right here and get it right here you're not leaving any stone unturned so adding a 
um, an FAQ schema is actually a very great way to do this. And by doing this, you're able to answer more questions that people are possibly asking or that your target audience might possibly be typing into Google search engine results page. So um, yeah, yeah, so basically that's it for that part. So yeah, improving user experience also on web pages. So there are tools that you can actually use for this. So when people come on your page, sometimes you really want to gain insight into where they are dropping off or where they are living. So there is a tool that you can use, it's called Crazy Egg. You can, um, and this tool, what it does, I'm going to break it down because yeah, as we proceed, I'll um, break it down more. So this tool is, is actually something that helps you to like see where people are dropping off and basically give you more insight into how your website is performing. A visual, it's more like a visual aid actually. And yeah, we have, um, we have features under it that are like um, heat maps. We have another feature that is called scroll maps. We have the confetti map as well. So this is actually, I'll break them down as we proceed as well. So they are basically going to like give you um, an insight into where people are either living or the, the scroll points where they are stopping and then they leave your site. So you know where they, it ends and it's basically just to keep you like um, informed and to know that, okay, why are people drop, dropping off here? So when you're trying to like, work on the user experience in the future you know that okay this is where they always stop off so we need to know why it's happening and the likes so a tool like crazy x is going to like really really help you to achieve that and to gain more insight into why people are leaving your website so um another thing that really really needs and that you need to help um, improve user experience on your website is the speed that's the website speed it needs to be increased and how do you do this basically you can it's a little bit more of um, technical SEO related. And what you do in this situation is that you need to reduce the server load time. You need to also minify some um, technologies, maybe your JS, um, yeah, JavaScript. You need to minify the page in general. You need to also compress, like compress images, compress HTML page and the likes. You need to really, really compress it to be very small so it loads fast. Also, another thing you can do, yeah, it's compressed, minify, yeah. And yeah, so basically, if I remember, as I proceed out, um, touch base on that. So is optimize your voice search. So there's a big difference in how voice search and text search are used today. So I am sure a lot of people here have used the Google, um, this OK Google um, app. So it's basically another way to like type something into search engine. So you don't really need to type it. You can just use a voice search to just ask whatever you want to ask and Google provides answers to that. So you need to understand that a lot of people are making use of this now. So if you're able to optimize your site for voice search, it's going to really, really uh, help you rank high. And you need to understand as well that not all websites are doing this yet. So it's going to give your brand a, hop, um, a upper hand if you really like um, adopt this strategy. So here are a few juicy voice search statistics that you should put or bear in mind better still. So with 25% of adults now owning a smart speaker, it is safe to say that voice search is definitely something you should into your strategy. Also, 65% of people who own an Amazon Echo or Google Home can't imagine to um, what they, they had a smart speaker. right and also two in five adults. so like adopting put into practice or better search it's going to be good and how do you do this and when they are just voicing it into google saying it it's always longer so um you are saying so for voice search so like i said earlier you need to make sure of them um, you need to make do with long tail keywords and also use structured data so by long tail keywords um what this means is that when people are searching using the when people are searching using the um, voice search, they tend to like typing, they tend to um, say more than when they are typing. 
So basically, for example, if I'm trying to like search for something, I for one, I'll just um, just go ahead and just focus on the keywords. I don't really do long um, English and stuff. I just focus on the most important thing, maybe web design agency in Nigeria or just web, most times it's just web design agency. But when it comes to using like um, a voice search, I, I tend to say more, whether I am looking for anything at all. So it's important that you make use of long tail keywords in this situation. So, um, and by using um, structured data, it's actually similar to the schema that I mentioned earlier, which is the markup schema. And you can just use um, FAQ schema. That's the one that appears under your, yeah, on the search engine results page where we have the, the listed, um, questions and then possible answers to it underneath. So that's another um, another approach that you can use to make sure that you're capturing more keywords and you're like um, able to like properly capture the searcher's intent when it comes to answering questions and appearing on the first page of Google search engine. So let me move on to the next slide. Sorry, please. I'm trying to go to the next slide. I don't know why it's hanging. Okay, let me just. Okay. So, yeah, design for mobile first. So it's very important to know that a lot of people actually visit websites with their mobile phone than like we have more people who visit websites with their mobile phones than um, with their desktop. So the majority of searches and half of all the purchases take place on mobile. So you need to bear this in mind. 79% of smartphone users have made a purchase online using their mobile device in the last six months. Also, 80% um, of shoppers use a mobile phone like inside a physical store to either look up product review, compare prices, or find alternative store locations. So basically, people are using their phones more than they use their desktop to um, search for anything on Google. So it is very important that your phone, uh, sorry, your website is mobile friendly. And yeah, by mobile friendly, I mean like the features and the layout, everything adapts properly on the mobile. The size, it's, it's not too small. The images are properly um, sized for mobile view because yeah, when it comes to sizing images and also sizing, um, yeah, when it comes to sizing images for, mo um, for mobile and also sizing for desktop, it's totally different. Same thing applies to font size and the likes. So making your, uh, your website mobile friendly is very, very important. And yeah, you also need to understand that Google has gone mobile first. So it's been some years in the making, but in March 2020, 2020, Google announced that it will only now primarily like use its mobile smartphone user agent to crawl sites. And yeah, like by crawl sites, I mean to like discover URLs before they get to like index it or do anything of that, um, anything related to ranking at all. So making sure that your, your, your device, sorry, your website is mobile friendly is very, very crucial to like ranking high on Google search engine results page. Then let's now um, take a look at um, topic clusters instead of keywords. So by topic clusters, we mean um, having more keywords than just having one keyword. So instead of just saying something like, um, I'm trying to look for an example to use in this situation. So instead of just saying something like um, web design or something as a keyword, you can use web design agency, or you can even have topic clusters in this situation, you're having like, you're imputing it, like it's, it's going to be a, a topic that properly captures all keywords as opposed to just keywords on your website. So Google is evolving and so is its algorithm. So its objective now, so the objective of Google now is to like understand the intention of its users. I said earlier that it is more of like a user element than just um, bots and indexing and stuff because at the end of the day, when they are indexing, they are trying to like answer a such as intent. So when you're able to properly like have topic clusters 
apart from just keywords. Yes, keywords are cool and nice to have, and you should have them, of course. But then you also need to include topic clusters. And by topic clusters, I mean having topics that properly capture your um, keywords. So in this situation now, it's not just like you titling your blog post as this and having keywords, but imputing the clusters in your um in your, your keyword um, database of the website, maybe your Google Analytics and stuff. So you need to like include your topic clusters in this situation now and not just using keywords like web design agency or using keywords like um, um, maybe fried rice recipe or something. So you can have like a longer keyword um, used. So for topic clusters, it's always like a combination of like four or five keywords. So in like a topic context in this situation. So um, how, so, so here are like three things in particular you should consider when considering your intent. That's for topic clusters. You need to make sure that you know your audience. If you don't know your audience, it's be very hard for you to know what they're searching for. And when it's hard for you to search and uh, to know what they're searching for, it's going to be almost impossible to properly um, tailor your keywords or your topic clusters to answer their questions. So if you are able to identify who your target audience is, and you're able to like know, like, um, okay, what they are searching for on Google. So you'll be able to properly tailor your keywords and topic clusters to answer their questions. So it's not enough to just know your target audience. You also need to know what they're searching for. And that way you're able to, so you can use the click flow in this situation for, to know what they are searching for because like i said click flow basically like lets you know what people in your target audience are searching for so you, they, they just give you like a list of suggestions of topics or things that they're typing in google search engine and you don't have to do it manually because they've already like done it for you automatically and yeah so you also need to do, do your keyword research very important like and by keyword research you need to know what people are searching for the keywords they are typing into google search engine results so this strategy achieves three things actually it satisfies user and um, satisfies user intent since they get easy access to more detailed information on their topic of interest so they are able to and when you're able to satisfy their their search intent you're able to properly like um get um, a higher click-through rate and there's also this tendency of social share because they yeah you have pro you've pro provided answers to their questions and it's going to like not just increase your um your click-through rate but it's also going to help you like get more site visits of course that's the result of click-through rate so yeah it it also turns your site into a better resource for those pillar topics and yeah like i said earlier it's important that Apart from people just finding your website on the search engine results page, it's also very important that your content is valuable enough and you're able to provide answers to their questions in your, in your, um, on your web page. Because once they click on it and then they are not able to find value or they, they are not able to properly find answers to what they are looking for, they will leave. And that's increasing your bounce rate. And by increasing your bounce rate, you're reducing your chances of ranking high. And once you're not ranking high again, it's very impossible for people to find you. So you need to also make sure that the content is valuable enough and they are able to like properly get um, answers that they are searching for. So um, let's move on to the next one, which is write longer content. So an SEO study by Backlink um, O actually concluded that longer content coming the longer content tends to accumulate more backlinks and by backlinks i mean um links on other web pages that lead to your own web page so let's say for example um a let's say an organization like um harvard mentions another educational organization in their space and then by mentioning them of course they are likely to like add the link to that website so this is a backlink for that website that Harvard is making reference to. So it is very important for you to like um, get these backlinks and I will go into detail as we proceed, but then I'm just trying to like quickly explain what a backlink is, um, is here. So you need to know that, um, you need to know that, yeah, you need to know that longer content is actually another way to like um, get this and not, just that but by, by longer content it doesn't have to necessarily be way too long so for a blog post it should be like 
around 2000, 1002 or 15. But then I said earlier, it's not really, really about the length of the content at the end of the day. But are you really able to like provide answers to these questions that people are searching for, right? Are you able to answer your questions and all that? So, and it's also very important that you bear in mind that for a service page, for example, where you list your services and the likes, you can have something like um, maybe 500 to 800 words there. But properly, bear in mind that you need to like um, add, um, what is it called? Paragraphs in between and make sure that it is properly readable in order, that, um, in order to make sure that people are not discouraged from trying to get to know more about your brand and what you do. So let's um, take the keyword link building tips. People searching for that phrase are likely looking for a comprehensive guide to link building strategies. So in this situation, you don't necessarily have to make the content way too long. So at the end of the day, it's about the content that you're creating. So if it's just basically a content that should highlight some things, it doesn't have to be way too long. And at the end of the day, it's going to be more of bullet points and then and like um short descriptions to just highlight and explain briefly on those points that you're dropping but then when it comes to like um something else like maybe someone is trying to in this situation it's not even a tip or anything like that but they want to learn more about something so just dropping like a short um content is not going to like be detailed enough for them it's not going to provide answers for them so you need to understand what kind of content am i creating is it something that has to be that has to have um like long words or this is just something that has to have like just um few words so the content you're creating is going to determine how long it has to be or how short it has to be okay so um let's move to the next slide okay so, so in order to like create longer content, you know, like sometimes you don't really want to start from the scratch or something. You probably have a website that is already, sorry, a web page that is already doing well. And then you want to like keep ranking high for, for that keyword that you used on that web page. What you can do and also to properly like capture this um, longer keyword strategy. What you can do in this situation, you don't necessarily have to start all over again by creating a content from the scratch. You can just refresh an old content. So what you do in this situation is you just get an existing content that already has like an authority and then, and also, also have like established readership. So you just like refresh it, add more content, like make it better and then add more um, keywords and then you can now republish it. So you can actually find um, the web pages that are performing well on your website by using um, your Google Analytics. So you can just go to the behavior under your Google Analytics, then go to site content, then go to landing pages. But be sure to search for um, the, the organic results page. That's the part that you need to like focus on. So because you want to make sure that this content that you're trying to republish or refresh again is one that um, has that organic um what is it called yeah organic traffic and stuff so you want to gain more insight into the organic traffic that that web page had initially gathered before you refresh it just for the sake of insight and so that you are able to like um measure again like after you you must have refreshed and republished it so you can measure again and know that okay this is where i am getting it right or this is where yeah something like that basically like refresh and then you're able to know okay this is how many people have visited the web page again after the last time we refreshed so let's move to the next slide i'm sorry it's taking forever to move Okay, so now let's take a look at the technical SEO aspect. So this is one aspect that you shouldn't overlook when you're working on your SEO because it's more like one of the vital parts. So you could actually be doing everything right, but if your site is not technically sound, it may be like, it may be underperforming. So um, if your web page is very slow when, it, when loading, whether on a mobile device or even um, on a desktop, users might be forced to like exit your web page and 
score on another page. But of course, sometimes you might think that it's as a result of bad connection. But Google knows that it's not connection related or anything. It's actually because the website is either heavy as a result of heavy um, images, like big images that way way too much or maybe because um, you're not doing some things right you're not properly compressing or minifying where you should so it's important that you minify your web page you make sure that um yeah but beyond the um sizing and the loading aspect there are still a lot of things that go into um play when we're talking about technical seo so what are those things that you need to like properly do right what are those things that you need to put into practice or into consideration when working on your technical seo so um what you need to do is that you need to ensure that your entire site loads on https so sometimes when you do like um proper seo test you sometimes get to find out that there are some pages on a particular website that load on http that um it doesn't have the secure socket aspect so without the secure and the s in http means secure so without the s there i'm sorry without your site being secure it's going to like tell google that it's not safe and google will not want people to like fall into the hands of maybe cyber criminals or something like that so it will always warn them that this site is not safe i'm sure you've seen that a lot of times so if you tell them that this site is not safe, this site, yeah. So, and you don't want to be losing people or site visitors because your website is not safe. So you need to make sure that it is properly secure. And yeah, you need your SSL certificate for that. It's a technical, um, it's, yeah, of course, this is a technical um, SEO aspect. So if properly done, your SSL certificate is installed and then, yeah, make sure that every web page on your website loads on HTTPS and not that some will load on HTTP and some will load on HTTPS. So having all load on HTTPS will do your website a great deal of good. So also you need to enable AMP for mobile. You need to invest in calling software. You need to correct your semantic markup. You need to fix page, not found so let's talk about them also so investing in crawling software so um yeah i already explained crawlers and you should understand what that is all about by now so you can use crawling softwares like deep crawl so deep crawl is actually a web-based crawler that checks sites for seo health and, and, and viability so deep crawl will provide you with a laundry list of necessary improvements and errors such as duplicate content broken pages or broken links flawed titles descriptions and meta tags and if you're able to like get all this in, uh, detailed information you'll be able to fix all these errors so if you're not properly um doing all of these you're not it's more like being blind to what's going on on the back end and that's not really good where you really want to get all of all of your SEO strategies right. So you need to be able to understand what is going on, which link is broken, which page is duplicated, which page is um which page has probably flood title, description, or meta titles. So you're able to fix all of this and make sure that okay, your keywords are properly used when necessary. That's for the um, titles, description, and metadata. So you and remember i said earlier that um metadata meta description and meta title are actually for the search engine not something that shows on your website itself it's basically to make sure that the search engine understands what your web page is all about so you need to be sure that nothing is broken in this situation it's not flawed and it's perfect just the way it should be so we also have botify so not only can botify check whether google has has crawled your page but it can also offer suggestions on how to restructure web content and site maps to optimize your web page for google crawlers so this is also a great um tool that provides you with insights on how to do it right where to like um fix your web content site maps and other stuff just like I have mentioned. So correct your semantic markup. I also mentioned this earlier, like when it comes to your, um, so it's more of your um, schema. That's more of um, the FAQ schema and the likes. So this has to do with the JSON aspect and the likes. It's So it's technical SEO, of course. So if done properly, it's something that really, really helps to like fix your website and help you rank. So, and also then we have the page not found error that you sometimes get maybe when a link is broken or maybe or maybe when the web page is no longer existing and you this um, and you probably did not um 
read, use um, redirect for that link. So in this situation, what happens when um, page not found is not fixed is that a lot of people will still get um, to find themselves on that page. And when they find themselves, when they use that URL that you're using before. So let's say, for example, you have um, maybe like your website name slash a particular page on your website that's maybe for about us. And maybe back then it was about us, about, and now you've changed the URL to www.futuresoft-ng.com slash about us. Before it was about, now we have about us. So the about that was probably used before is no longer used now. And when someone visits that link, it's going to take them to a 404 page. And when it does that, it means like um, if we don't make use of, if we don't make use of this redirect URL um, stuff, it's going to like make, um, it's going to mean that we're losing traffic because when they land on that page, they are likely to like just go back. So having like back home or something like that will really properly help you redirect them to the appropriate page where you want them to find themselves. So yeah, you need to make sure that that is fixed as well. So um, let's move on to the next. So targets um, local searches with landing pages and, and listings. So almost half of all searches on Google are from people looking for local information. So most times when you're searching for something, you don't want to make it broad. So you try to narrow it down to either your environment, your, your locality, your city, your town, or yeah. So in doing that, you end up typing in your location. So maybe um, makeup studios in Lagos, or I might end up saying makeup studios in Ikeja, just because I want to narrow it down to an environment that's very close to me. So for, for, for a brand, for a makeup brand that properly uses um, this local search um, SEO, they are actually going to be able to pop up in this situation. So one of the very great approach to using this um, kind of situation is to make sure that you have web pages that are dedicated for local SEO, that you dedicate a landing page for local SEO. So yes. So how this works is that you create like a landing page and on this landing page, you make use of keywords that properly capture your environment. So maybe for this web page, I create like um, more information about us. And then here instead, I'm going to now say, I'm going to use keywords like makeup studios in Ikeja, makeup studios in um, Lagos, makeup studios in Ogba or something like that because they are all close to Ikeja. So things, um, making use of local SEO is very, very important, especially if you have a brick and mortar business, just like I said. So, because people are going to like end up um, visiting your physical location. So ignoring like your location and stuff is really going to harm your business. So you need to make sure that you are making use of local SEO. <coughs> so um, let me move to the next. All right, so here are three huge SEO techniques to capture potential customers who live locally. So you need to double check your directory list, um, listing. In this situation, you can actually use, um, before you use Google My Business, you can, you can actually do like a research to know like the location that people are, the keywords that people are searching for. I mean, keyword, the keywords that people in your, locality are searching, uh, they are using. So it's very important for you to identify that. You need to also build and optimize local landing pages, like I said. Yes, you already have a website that contains your home, your about us, your services, your contact us page, and yeah. But it is very important that you also create a landing page that properly captures your local, your, your, your environment. And how do you do this? Basically, it's it's all in the SEO and the topic clusters that you use in this situation. So if you're highlighting the environment in, <clears throat> in this web page, like you create a landing page for um, makeup studios. Let me still use that as, as an example. Makeup studios in Ikeja. You create a landing page for that. Yes, you already have a page that talks about you and your business. Yes, you already have a landing page that talks about your services. But 
creating a local like a landing page that just that is just dedicated to just talk about your business in Ikeja is really going to help because here you're properly capturing the um yeah you're properly capturing the location and the likes so it helps you to rank when someone is searching for a business that you offer in their environment so you also need to optimize, like make do with technical SEO for local search. So the technical SEO aspect is still talking about um, adding keywords in your meta tags, meta title, and also your meta description. Remember, it has to be consistent across. Like, um, yeah, you need to have that particular keyword that is in your meta tag, meta title, and meta description. So this really helps. And if you're not using the appropriate keyword, it's still not going to really yield the kind of result that you want it to yield. That's why it's important that you do your keyword research and you're able to know what people are searching for. I mean, your target audience, what are they searching for? All right, so now take advantage of YouTube SEO. So I mentioned earlier that YouTube is actually, like it is ranked the largest search engine that we have today after Google. So it is the most popular video site on the internet with 2 billion monthly active users watching 1 billion hours of video every day. So many SEOs actually forget about YouTube when they think of search engines, right? So video marketing isn't for everyone or every business, of course, but it's actually not a bad idea to actually leverage on it right now that almost everybody is digesting video content, almost everybody is online and stuff like that. So if your business is able to leverage um, YouTube to like promote what you do, provide informative, um, create informative content, just like we're doing with Launch and Learn at FutureSoft, yeah, it's going to like properly help you to um, still rank because now you're taking advantage of YouTube SEO. And if you notice, there are sometimes that you type something into Google and even apart from the fact that it gives you a lot of search results, you still see videos that are from YouTube that properly answer um, the question you're looking for. And sometimes instead of just reading or reading, yeah, instead of reading like um, a content related to what you just typed, you, you, you find yourself watching a video instead. So that's because some people, prefer videos that answer their questions to um to what is it called to reading text content so it's important for you to like also leverage youtube and make sure that you're doing your seo aspect of youtube perfectly and how do you do that you need to make your video seo friendly first off by making your video seo friendly you need to make sure that the title is clickable the title is also um it also includes like two of your keywords. And by doing this, you also need to make sure that you make um, use of like heading and subheading. So for YouTube, this is how it works. For the heading, it's going to be something that captures, it's going to be basically the keyword. Let's say um, YouTube, let's say the, let's say the heading for this situation, for the example I'm trying to give now is YouTube SEO. Then the subheading is now going to be um, tricks on how to rank high on on, on YouTube or yeah, something like that. So what you have to do in this situation to separate your heading and your subheading is the heading is going to be the first on the title and then you're going to have like a colon. Then when you have your colon, then you can now have your subtitle. It's basically you trying to capture more keywords as well as um, give more detail into what the video is about because you're not just saying um, YouTube SEO. Now you're giving us a little bit more information about what we are going to gain in, in, in yeah by watching your video so also you need to be very um you need to be sure that you properly describe what the video is about so you must have seen on youtube that there are some videos that you find and then you see like a description of that video so there are some people that do it perfectly and by perfectly i mean they properly describe what the content of that video is they literally just type everything down like a mini blog post right and some people it's even very long so it's not about the length or something but it's just for you to understand that you um sorry and um, the search engine cannot read video content so it is when you properly describe this content using the descript um the description box for yeah, using the description box on YouTube that you're able to like tell um, the search engine that this is what this video is about and to be able to read what the video is about, of course, and then 
suggest it for people when they try to search for something that you do. So if you're doing the um, title part, right, you're doing the heading part, right, the keywords part, right, and you're leaving out the description part, it's going to really, really hurt your um, SEO efforts because now Google cannot read what you just um, posted because it cannot read video content. So you need to properly break it down by using the descript, um, description box and yeah. It's, so make it detailed. You don't want it to just be like a short description, like a, like, like a caption where you, yeah, like, a, um, like an Instagram caption or something. You don't want it to be that short. You want it to be such that the search engine is able to like know what, what's on your video. <clears throat> Then we have the create custom thumbnails. So by custom thumbnails, I mean, when you go on Google, sometimes you see like, um, when you search something, you see, maybe I say, okay, uh, how to create websites using WordPress. Yes, of course, they already have the title by the side. They already have the, um, yeah, the title and all the information by the side. Then you see that image of, yeah, the image that is used for, for the video. It is very important for you to have that type of thumbnail that still highlights the topic by the side. It doesn't have to be exactly the way you put it in your title box and the likes, but it has to still be something that suggests what they are going to be learning in that video. So creating your own thumbnail is going to really help you as well. Then create video playlists. So in this situation, it's more like a story series or yeah, like a, a, a chain of content. So what it does, it, it helps you keep your audience glued to your channel because they'll be like, okay, they can't wait to see the next one or the next one. And this works well for when you have a very lengthy content and you don't want to bore your audience by dropping a video content that is way too long. So you can just break it down into like a series of videos. So it's more like a playlist and they can always just come back to watch the next one. So that way it's not like an overload of information for them and they're able to like um, digest the content bit by bit, right? So once they get value in the first video, of course they'll come back in the next video. So that's why it's important that, okay, when you're creating your content, you're not just creating content, you're still bearing in mind that I want people to still come back to my platform because they are getting value. So content creation goes beyond just trying to get people to come to your page for the first time and never come back again, no. Or better still, SEO um, is not all about getting them to come on your page and then that's all. You still want them to be able to come back to your page because they got value the first time they came to your um, page. So the same thing applies for YouTube. You want them to still come back next time again because, oh, wow, I get a lot of value on this person's um, educational um, videos. I get a lot of value on this person's content, whether it's comic or educational or whatever kind of content the person is putting out. So yeah, it's very important that you bear that in mind because you don't want a one-off kind of um, visitation on your website. So create a diverse backlink portfolio. For this part, it's basically <clears throat> for you to keep in mind that quality matters. So by backlink, I already explained backlink earlier, and it's more of that um, link on another website that links to another person's website. So backlink is actually of high quality and low quality. And by high quality, I mean like a domain that has authority mentioning your website on their page is, is giving you like a high quality, um, it, it's called a high quality backlink because I made an example earlier with um, Harvard and I said, imagine Harvard mentioning another educational system or maybe any kind of, um, yeah, and it's also very, very good for that, for, for the website that is mentioning you to be in the same niche as you, because what this tells Google is that, okay, you create valuable content and this is like a vote for you. So the more backlinks you have, the more it, it's like a vote and it's telling Google that, okay, this person is actually creating content that are high quality, that are valuable and worth sharing. That's why we are mentioning them on our platform. So DA here stands for Domain Authority and it's from domains that they themselves already have that authority. So if they get to like mention your own name, they are equally passing that authority onto you. And they're also telling Google that you are one site that is valuable. Your content is nice and should be suggested to people and the likes. So yeah, it is, and it's actually a very integral part of um, 
SEO and ranking on Google search engine results page. So it's important for you to be able to like um, get your website to appear on other people's web page. So, and how do you really achieve this? All you have to do is, like I said, it all boils down to the content that you create, the content that you dish out on your page. If it's valuable, you don't really need to like do too much marketing or something because the value is already speaking for itself. What I'm getting on your platform is already speaking for itself. There are a lot of platforms or websites, better still, that I have come across that nobody suggested them to me. The only way I came across them, and I believe that's how it is for almost everybody, the way we most likely like um, come across websites is by typing something into Google, like a search query, and then it gives us like a list of options. At the end of the day, you realize that you, and you click on this um, link, you might get answers to your questions, but you might not just settle for that alone because you still want to hear other people's opinion. You still want to see what other people have to say. Then at the end of the day, you find yourself on one, on one website that properly captures everything. And then you either bookmark it or just save their name somewhere or just, yeah, because you got that kind of, the value that sometimes you even get more value than you really, really signed up for. So they did not really do anything than to just do their homework, right? They got ranked on Google search engine results page. Now I found them and their content is actually convincing enough for me to come back the next time. So next time I might not even type their name on Google or something. I will just go ahead and just um, click on that link that I previously copied. And then I go back to their website, search for whatever I'm searching for again, and I find my answer. So if I have like um, a business that is related to jazz or something or a situation where I have to mention them, I'll end up mentioning them maybe on a social media platform like Facebook or Twitter, or I might end up, if I have a website, I might end up like trying to give value to my own audience by directing them also to that website because that's like a resource now. So I'm giving them access to this website to also find out this and that. So that's how um, backlinks work. So when promoting content, don't only target the big hitters. So by big hitters, I mean big names that, that already have like domain authority, like, um, like Jumia, like um, Amazon, like all these big names. In SEO um, world, we have SEMrush, S-E-M-Rush. Yeah, we have quite a number of them like that. So they have that domain authority already. So if they get to mention another site, they're actually more like passing that kind of authority onto that. And it's more like them telling Google that we vote for this, this website because it has valuable content as well, right? So in as much as you want them to mention you because it is super, super, it's going to do your website a lot of good. You still want to like get mentions from even smaller sites because like I said, having backlinks, it's more like a vote. It's telling people um, Google that this website is actually um, actually creates valuable content that should be suggested to people and the likes. So, also if you are having a dis um, a disavow link. So by disavow, I mean a a link that is like harmful or something, and you're trying to tell Google to like discard it. So if you're having, so if you're going to like disavow links. You need to err on the side of caution. So disavowing too many links can be harmful than disavowing too few, right? So like I said, disavowing is actually telling Google to discard and actually. So the good part now is that Google is very, very good at recognizing bad links. And bad links are links that you actually want to disavow. Maybe links that are linking to 404 page, like I said earlier. So. Google is very good at recognizing bad links now and choosing to ignore them. So at the end of the day, it just ignores them and yeah. But then apart from Google doing this for you manually, there is, I'm sorry, automatically, there is also another way you can do it and that's using um, Linkody. So it's a tool that you use also to like tell Google, discard this, discard that. So you might want to check that out. So let's take a look at recommended SEO tools. We have Keyword Rank Checker. So Keyword Rank Checker is actually a tool you should use before you even start at all with um, your SEO practices or efforts or anything, before you even start anything. Try as much as possible to use this tool to like determine your page ranking based on keyword search. So, because it is very important for you to know how you were performing before you started doing this 
thing, right? So you are able to like measure that. Okay, after we started doing this is something that has changed the number of sites with us per month. So you're able to properly weigh the difference. You're able to properly tell that, okay, this is the change that we've experienced after we adopted this strategy, after we adopted that strategy. So key rank checker, keyword rank checker is actually a tool you should um, check out. Then we have the Google structure data testing tool. It is used to find out whether you are already implementing schema. So I already mentioned schema earlier. So using a tool like this is going to help you know if your website is already implementing it or not. If it's not, you can still use this tool to like get started on implementing schema. We have schema markup. This explains the type of code you need and how to implement it. That's for your structured data. All right, so um, then we have the topic cluster model. It's created by HubSpot and it works by linking relevant content pieces together in clusters. You know, I talked earlier about having topic clusters to still support your um, keywords and the likes. So this tool is a tool that you should check out. So we have the Keyword Explorer. So it's a versatile tool and dynamic program that covers nearly every aspect of um, keyword exploration, trying to find out this keyword or that keyword, basically for your keyword research. Then we have the SEMrush, um, SEMrush, S-E-M-Rush, however you want to pronounce it. So it's widely regarded as one of the best tools for SEO analysis, and particularly where it concerns business intelligence. It's like, so, um, it's a platform that properly gives you insight into a um, word, and it's just very robust, and it's a tool that you should check out as well. Then we have the RHF, so, or RFs. So it offers a wide range of products, including backlinks checker, backlink checkers, content explorers, and position trackers. So um, you should check that out as well. Then we have the Google My Business. It's actually a free to use listing service, and it is perfect for you when you're trying to make use of local search um, SEO. Like I mentioned earlier that you need to um, adopt this local SEO by creating like a landing page for, for, for your local search, right? Apart from that, you need to have a Google My Business um, account as well. You need to set it up. So having it kind of captures your location, your opening hours, your like the image of your facility. It's perfect for people who have like a brick and mortar store, not just online store. So, yeah, because it gives people more insight into where you're located, your opening hours and stuff. So when they want to visit. Also, number um, the number that they can actually call to reach you. Yeah, so um, I think I repeated this schema markup twice. So we have the crazy egg. I mentioned earlier that this um, is something that you can actually use to, like, create and understand user experience with rich visual aids, like heat maps, scroll maps, and confetti maps. Each of these are actually graphic represent graphic representations of one aspect of UX. Um, UX. So with heat map under that's under crazy X, it's actually a colorful representation of where users have clicked on the website. So it gives you like insight, like deep insight into which um, page they clicked on or what they clicked on, which call to action button they clicked on and the likes. So it's you, basically all these things, you have to create account with them. Although Crazy Eggs is actually based on subscription. So but it's very, very good. And I think they have like a free version, I'm sorry, free trial for just some period or you can check it out also. Then we have the scroll maps and it shows how far down the, the page your users scroll before leaving. So you get to have like a proper, so basically it's like, it's going to show you where on your website they actually got to before they left. So it's properly like detailed and it's a visual representation, like I said. Same applies for confetti maps. It's more like a dotted, it's just like confetti now. So it's like dotted, dotted, different colors, of course. So it's going to show you which referral sources resulted in most clicks as well as which people click on what on most ones they are on your page right so what they click on most when they're on your page so it's like dotted 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 like this and just shows them where it um, shows you where people are clicking on and so basically for insight's sake and so you get more understanding of how your website is performing and how people are interacting with it so um sorry 
So um, that brings me to the end of the class. If you have any question now, you can ask. And I hope you all understood what I explained so far. So if you have any question, you can just ask now. Thank you. Can anyone hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Okay, okay. Does anyone have any questions? You can drop it in the chat box as well, if you do. Hi, does anyone have any questions? Hi, um, um, Hi, Agnes. Well done. Um, Thank you. Great, great work. Um, my question would be that, um, is it all businesses? So for example, um, in the category of business to customers or business mm -hmm. to business, um, is it everyone that needs to optimize their SEO in the sense that it, it, during the training, you were mentioning um, local-based um, targeting. So what if the person, some, a business wants to target beyond their local space? Is it advisable to look beyond the normal reach? Okay, thank you, Agnes. All right, so um, SEO has nothing to do with whether you're targeting a local audience or whether you're targeting a broader audience like maybe international market or stuff seo is actually important for every kind of business model whether it's b2b whether it's b2c whether it's c2c whether it's um b2b i don't know if i've mentioned that earlier but yeah it's important for you to like optimize your website regardless of your business model regardless of the kind of website you have as well even if it's like a um maybe an lms you still need to optimize your website that's learning management system if it's like an um an e-commerce website, you still need to optimize your website. If it's like an information website, you still need to optimize your website. And also, if you're targeting local audience, you need to also optimize it for local search. If you're targeting like an international market, you need to optimize it. Like I said earlier, you just need to understand your target audience, know what they're searching for. And if you're able to do all of this, it's going to properly guide you when you're trying to tailor your keywords and also like create content for your own page SEO and the likes. So regardless of your market, regardless of your audience or yeah, or the kind of website that you have, you just have to like make your website optimized. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, All right, thank you. Um, does anyone have any question again? Hi. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think anyone has any question again. Thank you so much. Okay. It was, um, All right. It was, it Thank was really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. So you can close the session. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for joining the session. Thank you very much, Jermaine. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day.